the recording. Um, I don't even hear us. I, no, I hope so. Armando, can you hear us just fine? Okay, yeah. We can. We're chilling. Oh, we can't. Hello. <sighs> you hear everything. Right. Nice. Mike. Should make a... Oh my gosh. Let's add stars. Keep it appropriate. <laughs> yeah, whatever, Bruno. Oh, so no, now we're recording. crashing the service. Did I crash the service? It's okay. <laughs> what service did I crash? Oh my god. <laughs> no, you guys. It's 11.30. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started. Um, first up, we're going to do the housekeeping. So we'll start with attendance. I will go first and we'll go swing around this way. All right. Haley Glass, present. Levi Chi, present. Matthew Rathman, present. Victor Delgado, present. William Coates, present. Michael Warner, present. Patrick Sinrena, present. Siobhan McKinney, present. Susana Villagomez, present. Perfect. And would anybody like to do the reading of the mission statement? Okay. Um, the TSAC mission statement is to support the evolving needs of MSU Denver students by advocating their best interest to enhance the university experience opportunities. Perfect. And then have y'all had a chance to look over the agenda and make sure everything on there looked correct? Is there anything we need to add? Um, so last week we presented a community for Tivoli Reimagined. Um, we didn't bring that up in our updates. But it's we need to vote for it though. Oh. So that's what okay. I'm to the community. So we need one representative from MSU. Uh, I was elected, well, that could come later, but we need one representative for MSU to sit on the typically reimagined. And I can read that out again. Yeah, is that what you want to add that to the agenda? Is what you're trying to do? Uh, yes, trying to add it to the okay. okay. add. So I'll second it. Oh, I'll make a Go motion ahead. to add the typically reimagined vote to the agenda. Oh, gosh, the community. I'll go ahead and second that. Um, anybody opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we'll go ahead and add that to the agenda. I'll just throw it in right after SAB. So we just need one person for that. Okay, perfect. Any other adjustments to the agenda? All right. Excuse me. It's not working. Uh oh. Oh, that. Oh, that. Yeah, it's recording in the corner. Sorry, we're just having some Wi-Fi issues. Can you still hear us, Armando? Yeah. Are you still there? It does still look like it's recording, but I don't know. Armando responded, so Can I leave the meeting. After um, pressing record, this is still here. Someone, ha someone has to. I think you'll be fine, dude. Should I oh, it, it's it's still recording. He's okay. like, so. yeah. should I restart? Yeah. No, I'm still going. I think you're. Good. Where, where's this? Where's this screen at? Over there. Okay, you're fine. Then. You should be fine. Then. Okay. That's connected to Ethernet. So. All right, all right, all right. Um, I motion to approve the agenda for today's meeting. Seconded. Any objection? Any abstentions? Sweet. We will go ahead and move forward. First things first is the budget committee. Um, I wasn't at last week's meeting, but I believe we decided that Mike was the only one that wanted to run. If anybody else would like to self-nominate or nominate somebody else, this is the time. I have an announcement to make on this. After a good, after a uh, fulfilling conversation with Patrick, uh, he seems like he, or he would like to take on the budget committee chair. So uh, I will, uh, we had a good conversation about it. I will stay on as vice chair, but um, at in this meeting, I will resign as interim chair. Okay. So. And do you still accept that nomination? Accept. And are you withdrawing yours then? I was never nominated. I was appointed. Okay. So I, I, I'm resigning as the appointee. So. Okay. Anybody else nominating self nominations or other nominations for budget chair? Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and motion we bypass voting or voting speeches and questions and we just nominate in Patrick as chair of the budget committee. Um, Second that. Any objections? Any abstentions? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. Motion passed. Next thing is the voting for the SAB. Um, we got Victor, Siobhan, and Will. Do all of you guys still accept your nominations? I'd, Victor? I'd like to remove my. Remove uh, yours, okay. Well, you don't need to do both. Well, I, I do. do. Well, so Mike? Siobhan, do you still accept your nomination? I do. Okay. Would anybody else like to self nominate? I would like to nominate Patrick for that board. Okay. Actually. Well, do you accept your nomination? Yeah, accept okay. Perfect. Any other self nominations or additional ones? Will, are you keeping your nomination for this? He said I yes. Did, yeah. Okay. Perfect. So then, since there are three representatives okay. and we only need two for this committee, we'll still go ahead with speeches. Um, Siobhan, I have you first on my list. Are you okay with going first? Perfect. Um, and we should kick. Do you want to explain the process for Patrick really quick? Yes. Yeah, we can. Um, so for voting of committees, what we do is we will have you each give a three minute speech. The other members that are running for the same committee will leave the room during that time so that they won't be in here to hear your speech. Um, and then we will have, I think we'll do three minutes of questioning. Um, and we'll just kind of ask you a couple of quick questions on the other things to try and see if you're a good fit for that position. Um, and then we will do an official voting in the team's chat to determine who we want to have as the chairs for the committee. Does that make sense? Just kind of as a general overview? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and call first. So Patrick and Will, if you guys want to step up. Do we need some time? Yeah, if you want to track of time. Yeah, Siobhan, Will, Victor, Patrick. All right, ready? Yes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Siobhan McKinney, and I'm here um, as a candidate for um, the SAB. Well, the reason I think that I am a good fit for the SAB is because I do have numerous um leadership um positions and the training that they give us also is very vital for my success as a business owner and also my capacity for um, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a I am a life learner so the training that they're giving us would be giving us and just that position is very vital for the success of my life as a student and as a business owner. And my capacity for doing anything on school in school is that I am free to, to be in as many orgs. I have enough time, more than enough time. I'm very good in school. My GPA is right now about four. You know? And so, yeah, I feel like I have the capacity, the time, and the willingness to learn what I don't already have, whatever skills that I don't have, that will help me also in my skill building. Does anybody have questions for Siobhan? Mike? I have a question. So um, because it is a co-chair role, you'll be working um, very much so with the other person. Um, how do you feel about working with Will and Patrick? Well, in my Kobe assessment, it shows that I am a very big asset in any team setting. I work well with anyone. Yes. Very adaptable and compatible. Does anybody else have a question for Siobhan? I do. Yes. So you say you have capacity, but mm -hmm. you were already a uh, co-chair for two other committees and chair for uh, another committee. Are you sure you'll be able to balance these four committees? Well, um, as being co-chair in the faculty and staff senate committee, they meet every two to three weeks. So um, so that's why my um, capacity um, for that is, is way less. There's not a lot going on in that committee and as opposed to the um so it seems right now is that most of my time is being spent with um, 
been in the um, PR committee. And so far, um, me and my co-chairs have been doing well. Right? Yes. So I do have time. I, I practically live on campus. <laughs> I need like seven, eight o'clock, Monday to Friday. So yes, I'm very dedicated to the cause of advocating for the students and for myself. And also, I'm dedicated to, to being successful in school. Perfect. Thank you so much, Siobhan. Um, how are we doing on time? Do we have more time for questions? Or? Yeah. Um, is there any more questions? It's okay. All right. Perfect, Sean. Thank you. If you want to go ahead and send in Will. Okay. Yeah. Um, there was nobody here for public comment, so I just. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a small I'm just tired of yeah. 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 I went out last night. I saw that. And then just to stay on the record, it is time for public comment. So if anybody comes on, please make yourself known. Um, maybe if you want to throw something in the chat about that, just so we can make sure we're mindful of it if somebody does come in. Are you over here? Yeah, go, go to the, oh, the front. Okay. Okay. Very well, very well. Hello. Awesome. Okay. Jesus. My my time start. I, you ready to start? I am ready to start. So. Uh, right. Go. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm William Coates, fellow counselor, and I would love if you guys voted for me. And the reason for that is I have familiarity with uh, the different offices at the SAB or the Student uh, Affairs Board fee goes to, and such as the Veteran Office, the LGBTQ Plus Office, the Phoenix Center. Um, I'm familiar with uh, Tyrell, one of the director of the LGBTQ Plus. I'm uh, familiar with Leslie, who's also a director of one of the offices. And um, other than that, I also have the experience of a year and more of TSEC, which gives me the understanding of administrative processes and adjusting uh, or adjusting my expectations to that and understanding the time frame for those things. And then alongside that, I am familiar with the bylaws. I printed them out and read them uh, all 16 pages, highlighted stuff, you know, so I am familiar with it now. Um, if you're going to run for something, you have, you should be familiar with what you're running is what I believe. And then finally, time capacity. Uh, being the chair of accountability, I only have to meet when necessary, and I hope I never have to meet. Um, so right now, I have a lot of time on my hands to be able to support the mission with SAB for uh, TSEC. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, does anybody have any questions for Will? Go for it. So I asked, uh, I'm not being consistent in my questions. Um, so SAB is a uh, co-chair of the board. And I want to see, um, how would you feel about, work? how do you feel about working with uh, either Siobhan or Patrick? How would you feel about working? Um, it is, it's a team effort. It's a very much so a team effort, so. I would be very happy to work with either of them and guide them if they need help. Um, and of course, rely on them when I need help on SAB. I do see myself kind of spearheading this more than the other chair. Okay. And it's not a chair, it's a vice chair, just FYI. That's just what the bylaws state, but different oh. dynamics there. Um, but yeah, I would be more than happy to work with whoever gets voted in. Emily did mention that in the past they've always done co-chairs for TSAC specifically, even though it does say in the bylaws that it's a chair and a vice chair, and they've done their vote as a combined vote. Um, I don't know if that's something we want to 
maybe have them amend or if we want to re-explore that in our own capacity. But when she did come in and speak, she did say that it's always been a co-chair. Okay, I heard that. Okay, I felt like I got the, yeah, perfect. Give her a comment to that. Get voted in. That is something that I would be more than happy to mention to the general committee. Okay. Oh. Levi, question. So I have a question. So I don't know, he said, hey, all my flight is boarding now, so I may lose connection over Teams. Might I be able to listen directly? Um, so I just had a question. Um, so you say you have the capacity for uh, this position. I know accountability, you know, me as much, and the same for great review. Mm -hmm. But would you still have time to do this knowing it? Because um, you know, coming to TSEC office, coming in for um, office hours and stuff like that, would that interfere with any future stuff like that or participating in events? If it does, then I would have to balance all my responsibilities um, and see what the council would prefer. They prefer me at uh, the SAB or at the event. Um, if I do get voted in, I do believe that I should be at the SAB meetings. Um, that is not necessarily something within just my control, but like putting the meetings and when and where. Um, but if it happens to conflict, then that is something I will bring up to the council and like get their opinion on. And if they are overwhelmingly want me to be at the meeting or at wherever they want me to be, it is where I'll be. So. I'm here foremost to represent TSEC on SAB. Sweet. That is all the time that we have for questions. Thank you. If you want to grab Patrick and sit in. Thank you. Clarification, though, since our mom is not here, please have a meeting. Make sure. Stand up here unless you have something to grab. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was a little aggressive. Yeah, stay, yeah, stay right there. Stand Not this way, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, time begins now. Hi guys, hi gentle ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I have like the best speech prepared right now, and I know you guys are aware of you know all the things that led led in to me coming into here. You know the delays, the questions. You know my commitment towards TSAC and being able to take take a hold of these things with the classes. But well, one thing I can say is that everything that happened before entering here kind of has helped me lead here. My my ambition and my goal to help the community and to help like, you know, one another, learn about the faculty, be more involved in MSU, see how I can help MSU. Not only just that in mind, that's helped me a lot. Tremendously, especially this week, you know, I feel the involvement, I feel the love, I feel the chemistry, and I'll have much more, it's only built much more of a desire to do more and to see what more I can do. I'm someone that likes to learn, especially when I'm new in the field, I'll go to the people that know the most. I'm not like a slow learner, I'm a quick learner, fast learner, and I'm someone that looks for the best. I learn, but I also learn from more. I seek to do the more and be more. That's AB, you know, being in the budget committee right now, you know, I'm sorry, I'm learning from all the ropes. It's something that I'm interested in. SAB is changing a step higher than that. It's something that I feel like I am capable of taking over. And I'm capable of demonstrating leadership, quality, and, you know, making an impact whether that be keeping it as good as it is or even better, nothing less. Perfect, thank you. Okay, we'll move on. We'll do three minutes of questions. Sure, we can start with Mike has a question cool. for you. Well, I asked the other two these questions as well. Um, how would you feel about working with the other two? How, 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 how do you feel? How's your, <clears throat> okay, that sounds pointed. Um, how are you working with people? Because it's a co-chair role, you guys are working together. Or a vice chair role if you were with the bylaws, but it can be a co-chair role. How would you feel about working with person on that team? I like working with like people. You know, being in a they have my own company. I'm used to working communications key, being able to understand the perception, um, you know, critical 
listening and be able to listen is important. Be able to speak up is also important. You know, like it's something I'm used to, um, especially, you know, getting along here, especially with this committee, especially with TSAC. I feel like I've been able to get along with a lot, a lot of people here. You know, I'm always willing to listen and I'm also willing to put my word out there if I have an opinion, like my voice. So, you know, it's, it's not nothing old for me. I'm pretty good. So I had a question. Um, I know you're doing the uh, committee for uh, budgeting now. Um, would you still have the capacity as a student to be able to balance that? Are you still come in for office hours and stuff? Absolutely. I'm someone that kind of takes on the role. If the role is needed to be filled, and I'm someone that, you know, it's right there. The door's open. I'm not someone to just look at it and just see it close. I'm someone that will want to walk through it. Whether that door may be scary, may or be, you know, creaking, whatever. I'm someone that goes up to it. So, you know, I have my four classes right now. I'm doing business, my company, which is something that I'm stabilizing right now as well with the communication that I've been learning through here at MSU. And with TSAC, you know, I feel like that's pretty good with the budgeting committee and helping out and being on co chair of so the PR committee. Um, yeah, I definitely have the commitment and the will to do that. Perfect. Does anybody else have any questions for Patrick? We still have another minute ish left. No. Okay. Uh, Patrick, if you should step in the hallway, you guys will stay out there for a minute while we debrief, and then we will bring you back in when it is time to vote. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. What do you think? Does anybody have any strong thoughts, opinions, questions, concerns? Um, could please go ahead, though. Uh, I was going to argue. Um, I would definitely. I'm. Definitely lean more towards Patrick just for the sheer fact that, like, capacity. Capacity. Uh, Will has 20 different things, and no offense to Will, but he can't make it in office hours. Um, Siobhan and, uh, is already busy with a bunch of other stuff. Um, so, Patrick, I think, would lead finally uh, when it comes to capacity. And he seems to learn like we all were when we first got into this stuff. Yeah, I do really like Patrick, but you go ahead. I agree. Traditionally, the budget chair is held a role in SAB every year. So I was at the first year, and then it was Alex the second. Was it Alex? Oh, yeah, it was Alex the second. I think he was a part of it, but was Alex part of the budget chair? No. It was just me and Gabe. Just kidding. Um, but I think because this is student fee related, I think the budget background makes sense. makes sense to put it in. Yeah. There. I actually have a question with that, though, um, because well, you know, Denny did it, so it wasn't the budget people because we have to present to the SAB as well. Um, but I think that was the chairs. I was sorry, I talked. No, you're fine. Myself. So then, me and Levi will be doing that presentation. Yeah, too, so I was trying to make sure there wasn't a okay. something yeah. like that. I, but last year it was Denny who presented, not you know, 100. Yeah. I do think it makes sense to have like the values align, kind of like Mike was saying, having uh, Patrick be budget chair and then also serving on this budget committee. I think makes sense because he has like a more of like an inside insight on like our budget and stuff and how it might affect us if they make changes Correct. in that regard. Um, the question is who's gonna be in the side Would that be? Yes. Just in that terms, would it be a conflict of interest though? That the budget chair is on this role where it's, we get our money allocated towards this? I think I any understand. of our student government members would have the same conflict of interest as Correct. the budget person. So it's having a member on there itself. So that's why they lead the committee and only have one vote on the committee. Right. Because yeah. the committee is made up of what, six other students? Yeah, they try and get like six to eight, I think. Correct. Yeah. And I trust Patrick to be fair about it and not be like, let's give TSAC a million dollars. Not like that would pass or something. But. I mean, it's less cost of interest, more him understanding more how things work now he's a budget as well. Right. Or another thing to think about is who's going to ask the more critical questions of these departments. Because mm -hmm. um, like last year, I think it was like the theater department, I think we put in a slightly lower category because they didn't like bring the numbers of like their ticket sales or how many were students kind of stuff. So like they didn't show us the impact. Correct. Alejandro mentioned something. Or, uh, Armando. Armando. <laughs> Yeah, present. I need for one of you to be mindful to present. What does that mean? I don't know. 
That's why I asked that. Oh, for the presentation that Matt was talking about, the advisors prevent for presenting, oh, yeah. not the students. Oh, okay. They decided to bring students in okay. with them for the presentation. Oh, that's so. okay. Okay. Um, okay, so it seems like everybody's pretty much decided on Patrick, but this is a two member representation. So I think it's important for us to also talk about capacity on the other, capacity two. On the other two and who we think could be like a good co lead on this. Um, I would argue that both of them have some limitations in their capacity. Siobhan with the PR committee, the PR committee, committee is a big one um, that's going to take a lot of work and effort. Um, uh, but will also with his job and other commitments as well. I mean, the bull's kind of hammed up for capacity because Sivan's also involved in other stuff outside. Right. But I would guess for vice chair, I would lean more towards Will because he has the experience. And then most of this happens next semester. So Correct. This is capacity could change. Easily change. Yeah. yeah, I know they do kind of like preliminary meetings and stuff yeah. like that, but I think capacity should change next semester. Like we revote the chairs, unless like actually do we do we revote the chair? Yeah, yeah we revote chairs next semester as well. Because we just kept any. Should we just kept any? So what do we think then? Is it should I make a poll? Um. Yeah. Does anybody else have any other? Sure, she'll speed us up because we have something at 12. Unless if we all agree with like Patrick and Will. Well, they, they need to vote. They have votes in this too, though. They also get a vote. They yeah. do. So we bring them in, yes. We'll do it in the chat. Yeah. But I mean, okay, interesting. Well, and everybody vote with their conscience, not just I think it's disgusting. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what we do. Yeah, yeah maybe pull for. We'll just uh, go with the majority because you're going with the majority. Chair, then vice chair. Yes, Victor, do you have any thoughts? Your power of democracy. In terms of like having a different point of view, um, I would like to support. I guess that there's a capacity effect, yes, but. Um, Siobhan is really adaptable. When you tell her yeah. something, mm -hmm. she does automatically make, make that decision and she does consider it. So like that's a plus side I do agree with Siobhan. Yeah. I don't see Will as much in the office too, so I don't know. Yeah, I haven't been able to work with Will in the office at all, actually, because we have office schedules. So I'm not sure. I've had to I've had to meet Will in his job to get help with some of the things. And Siobhan is always in the office. Siobhan is always in the office. Unless if she has class, but she automatically comes back. So. Right. So definitely some things to consider. I think we should go ahead and, for time's sake, bring them in into the voting real quick, since we have somebody coming in at noon. Well, so they brought coffee. So. Are you all? Are they trying to bribe us now? We are trying to bribe us. I saw Shabbat with the big right there outside. Oh, yeah, no, that's from the event over there. Oh, so this is a bribe. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is all Shabbat. Yeah. 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 Okay, perfect. Hello. She's saying whatever. Hi. Hello. We are doing the voting for one of our committees real quick. It should only take like another couple of minutes. Where should I sit? Is, there um, a is this one free? Yeah, this is yeah free. that one's free. Okay. You want to sit there? Thank you. Get yourself comfortable. Where is the? Where is the? Is it on? 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 It's on this one. Oh, you know what? Not guys. I was saying that. We put it in the meeting chat, but he's moving it to our okay. main group chat, so just give it a second okay. and it'll show up. So it's about to ask for Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good right about now, doesn't it? <laughs> me, Will. No. Convince me, Will. <laughs> you make two selections. <laughs> Let's say two polls, one for chairman. Oh, yeah, is in there? Yeah. It's in there. Uh, you can go ahead and make. Yeah. So you pick your two. So two I should both. do two, two separate polls, one for. Well, I just did. I just no. No. Just one. One. 
Yeah, I'm just, yeah. Or they can select two. You may just leave them. Yeah. Okay. So you can select two. Yeah. Okay. So you can select two. Yeah. Okay. So can select two. Yeah. Split, have to go on our phone or something too. Let's split up the numbers. It's in the main team's chat. I need these the best. Everybody except for Amelia is here today, so it should be nine. I will be right back. Did you vote? I did vote, yes. Are you sure you voted? We only have six votes in, so. Levi, did you vote? I'm getting coffee, sorry. We're waiting on votes. How's your morning going? Still sitting at six. Do you still need to vote? Or do you submit yours? Okay. Oh, we was supposed to vote. Wait, wait, hold on. One sec, one sec. I didn't vote. I didn't vote. Hold on. I didn't vote. Okay, one sec. Okay, you voted. Siobhan's working on it, and then. I voted. You, you got it? Okay, so how does have Siobhan? Where? Mine too. Nine votes. Should we? Nine said he voted. Nine votes. Nine votes. Nine votes. Nine votes. Oh. Is it a tie? Yeah. Bruh. Is it a tie? So, wait. Is it a three way tie? No. no, no. So, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, we'll just do a purple for these two also when they come back in the Did I go to the bathroom? Couldn't decide. Oh, I don't know. Um Congratulations, Patrick. You will be our first um, chair for the SAB committee. Um, it was a tie between Siobhan and Will, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat again. Since we'll be taking out Patrick, you can now vote for like just one or the other, and we'll see if it still ends up in a tie. Let me, I get a vote again. Yes, everybody gets to vote again. Yeah, you get to vote for your. And we'll see. Like, I'm about to I'm about to wait for Mike to get back. I thought it was going to be tied between me and Pat. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Make sure you vote. I did. I did send a presentation. I, I thought we could just chat. And then, That's if you all want me to come back with a presentation, I could find out what you all are. Would want to hear about later in the semester. Mike, we have a second poll. Second poll. We had a tie for second place. So Patrick is in, and then we're doing a second one between just Siobhan and Will to see if we can break the tie, maybe. Okay. All right, let's see. Mike, who else is in? Ooh. We're going to need two more votes. Hi. Don't call me Will. I just voted, so. Okay, thought, yeah, yours popped up right away. Somebody, everybody double check and make sure you actually submitted your vote because we're still missing one. Familiar? Nine, so it's we're at eight. We have nine people here. Okay. I didn't vote. My bad. I thought I did. <laughs> did that go through or not? Um, that's not done. And then it wasn't me. Because it says it was one mistake. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, uh, I just did it in the same one. It was one on the one. Mm -hmm. It was not me and Will. Alright, that was me. Eight. Eight. So, nine. That's eight. Eight. So, that was eight. Is there ten votes total? Then? Nine. No, it's okay. not. Nine. Really it's ten. Congratulations, Will, on securing that second position. <laughs> Okay. Now, we'll turn it over to our guests. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you all for having me. So, thank you for coming. Yeah. So, I'm Emily Reagan. I'm a professor in the chemistry and biochemistry department. I've been here at MSU Denver about 11 years, and I'm running our Open Educational Resources Initiative. And we've had a task force since probably about 2018 in the fall. Have you all ever heard of this phrase, open educational resources? Mm -hmm. So what it means is the resources that have an open license, often a Creative Commons license, which means it's free to share them. And it's free for faculty even to modify or update them or really anyone to make a new iterated version. You just have to 
reference the original version. And so I've been teaching using open educational resources in general chemistry since about, I guess, spring of 2016. And they've really proliferated. And the advantage to students is it decreased textbook costs, decreased other course materials costs. So for my general chemistry course, you don't have to buy a textbook. You don't have to buy an online homework system. You show up, there's a book through a publisher called OpenStax that you can use online. I have little chunks of it in Canvas where it's relevant. And I made my questions in Canvas so no one has to pay anything extra for the course. And so I'm trying to encourage my colleagues across the university to explore whether there are existing open educational resources that would work well in, in their courses, and if so, adopt them. If there's nothing in their field, maybe they want to create something and share it out. Something that's really made this project possible and really accelerated our success is there is grant funding from the state of Colorado through the Colorado Department of Higher Education. So I've been coordinating our grant applications and we just submitted a grant, our seventh year of grant funding. So we're asking for $140,000 from the state. And most of that would go to supporting faculty around adopting, adapting and creating OER for use in our work. So anyway, this is a great initiative for me to share about with students because you are ultimately the beneficiaries of this, although I also believe that faculty benefit. Um, we have an OER task force. We don't currently have a student representative and we would welcome one. So I don't, I, that's just an invitation. There's no obligation, but I thought I would share with this group that this fall, we don't have a student representative on the OER task force. And if that was something that people would be interested in doing, we meet once a month. Um, I think Monday, <laughs> I'm trying to think Monday at 9 a.m. I think is the time that we've been meeting. So that's an opportunity, it's not an obligation, but I just thought I would share that with this group as a, we're always looking to enhance the student participation. We're looking ahead, there's Open Education Week, the first week in March, and we wanna have some sort of event that would be student facing. It's a little different than what we've ever done before. So finding any people that would like to partner on figuring out how to hold a successful event is another kind of invitation or potential ask I have for you all. And then just, you know, maybe what questions you have, what you would like to learn more about for the future. Um, I'll just, I don't know, throw that out there and kind of see what, what all you have. Yeah. Um, again, thank you so much for being here today. Um, definitely appreciate the I apologize for the last minute communication. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Um, I guess my question would be, do you know the percentage of how much the different colleges are using OERs at, by any chance? Because I know I took one class that, so far that has used OERs, which was phenomenal. And uh, Professor Thangasami, uh, political science. Political science. Um, he did offer like a textbook version we could pay for if we wanted to learn that way, but he also offered the online OER version of it, which is free. Um, so I guess my question would be, do you know the percentages for each college that are using OERs as of right now? So I don't have the breakdowns by college. I do have some data related to general studies courses and broken down by general studies designation, which I would have to, I don't know it all off the top of my head, but that is a report that I have had um, folks in the data side of things set up for me so that I can run. So, because I am trying to get, you know, to have options in all the different general studies that have to be taken, having OER options, you know, across the board. We have targeted some high enrollment courses, so COM 1010 and COM 1100, uh, Nutrition 2040, at least the online Online sections and introductory psychology. These are all some high enrollment courses that have adopted OER. So maybe what some of the more common places you might have possibly encountered them, but political science as well. Um, we have a course marking initiative where faculty can choose to have an attribute added to their courses that indicates there's no cost for materials. So I have, for example, in my chemistry class, I have that. Or they can also put, alternatively, have a low cost, less than $40 designation. They, faculty can get to the no cost or low cost by using OER or in other ways, like maybe they found the resource uh, in ebook with an unlimited license at the library. So that would be another strategy for getting maybe to no cost, but that wouldn't technically be um, OER. Okay. Yes. I was going to ask about that. So um, about 17% of our course sections are either no cost or low cost. Uh, I think, I believe that was for this fall, whatever the last semester that I felt like I could check. 
Um, so there's a chance it was last spring, but I'm pretty sure that was this fault. There was 13% were coming in at no cost for materials and another 4% in the low cost. But I don't believe we have all of our courses appropriately marked because it's this optional system. So I, I'm going to be meeting with the Council of Chairs just next week on Wednesday, trying to get department chairs to help encourage their faculty to participate more fully in this initiative. I, we really need better data and we need, you know, departments maybe to be organizing, let's get all of our courses appropriately marked so that then students ideally would have this information in the course schedule when you are registering. <laughs> it's a little tricky because the schedule comes out in a way that we can add these attributes like October 4th, and then it becomes available for students to look at just maybe 10 days later. That's a very narrow time period to try to get all the attributes added, especially since some faculty don't know which sections they're teaching. So it's an, you know, it's a challenge to get everything marked, but we want to keep improving that course marking initiative because I know it's helpful. Like data shows that many students choose classes based on course material costs, or maybe would choose to take more credits in the semester if they know they don't have expensive course material costs that semester. That's something faculty don't really understand very well. And so I'm always trying to help them understand some of the hard choices and trade-offs that students are making so that we can make better choices about our course materials. Um, I had a project spring 2023 where I worked with Valeria Castaneda, who is a sociology major, and we did 12 student interviews. And just some of the quotes I got from those have been really helpful for me to use when I'm communicating with faculty, trying to help faculty understand, you know, kind of what students are up against when it comes to course materials. But if you all have any ideas for how to, you know, um, have more student perspectives and experiences that can get shared back with faculty as I try to lead trainings and do other things to motivate faculty to think critically about what materials they're using and why, and are there some new options that they're not aware of that they might you know, enjoy using for their courses? Mike, and then Susanna, and then Mike. I have, no, a, com I have a comment on this question. Oh. And then Victor, sorry. So as a business student, um, <laughs> at first I hated ODR because like, it wasn't like in its full prime when I first got here, mm -hmm. but now like I pay like 150 bucks for basically all my courses. Everything's on Cengage. That's why. Oh, okay. So that's a little bit different. A little different. Yeah. yeah. Go on. Oh yes, but um, I could definitely I see like this very much helping business students and like I, I see a tougher sell for like like a like a writing not, not writing student but like an English student who has to buy the book and kind of do lots more writing. I see a lot more like ODR being like a little more accessible to like. Students in the business realm, math realm type deal, because yeah. a lot of their assignments are on these uh, re re open education resources. Well, so yeah, so a lot of the online homework systems that come through a publisher like Cengage wouldn't be considered an open educational research but resource, but yeah, it's a commercial publisher and they have the online homework system. So some disciplines are really leaning heavily on online homework. Yeah. And there's great things about online homework systems, right? Students can get immediate feedback and more practice and getting practice and feedback is really an important part of learning. I also want to get rid of the cost, so that's why I made my own online homework system in Canvas. We've got some colleagues in math for Math 1080, Math 1210 that are using other computer-based systems that can be offered to students for free. The online homework space is challenging because there's servers and other things that are required that sometimes there is going to be a cost even if it's open. And then there's also resources that are really helpful for students that are commercial resources, and those are the ones that you're having to pay okay. more money for. Um, and here's my deal. I'm not trying to get rid of all commercial resources that we're using. I want us to use them strategically. If you have a resource that's really, really working well for you and your students, Great, let's keep using that. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to have required textbooks that actually, do the students really need those textbooks? Actually, probably not. So let's get rid of those as required. And if we need to have a required resource, let's have it be an open educational resource so everyone can have it day one, no cost, and we can just hit the ground running using it. So we want to be smart about the resources that we're using. Yeah, uh, I have Susanna next. I had another question. I know that you said that you try to encourage more um, departments to encourage the faculty to like do this open learning. What is one thing that like or reasons why faculty are trying to be away from it instead of like being told? 
Well, whenever you're doing something new, it takes time. And sometimes you don't even know what the possibilities are because you just know how things have been. <laughs> so some of it's just helping faculty be aware of there are more of these open educational resources every year, more and more are coming on board. And so there's faculty who looked three years ago, didn't find anything. And then they look again and like, oh, actually this book has come out and this fits my class really well. And I actually now I do feel comfortable switching to it. So um, 10, 10 years ago, there weren't nearly as many options as there are now. And do you think by like, showing the faculty like how to like learn these new updates will encourage more of them to like be open about open learning? I think so. And it's what I've just seen personally is the reason I started doing this work is I worked with an instructional designer to redesign my class to start teaching it online. And I did that work in 2015. So this is way before the pandemic. And um, it was the instructional designer who taught me about OER. And I just, I didn't know, right? I just didn't know before that point. Once I started doing it and I realized how much it was working well for me and working well for my students, I started to try to share this with other faculty. And um, now my department is really close to using OER for all of our chemistry and biochemistry classes. Like we're getting close. And so we're the vision is to have a whole zero textbook cost program within our department. And that's the vision that we're working toward. But that's taken, you know, I started this work in 2015. So that's taken nine years for you know, me to gradually start using OER across my classes and then for my colleagues to see what was happening and for them to start using it and for it to spread. Like, it just takes time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Matt. Um, I was curious if we could get like a job description basically for, for being on the those. types of students you want. Okay. Um, Cause I was, Thinking we can discuss it as the council to see if one of us can take on that role, or if we can try and help you find other students around campus to join your committee. Yeah, that. direct comment on that. We do have a lot of um, students that have come into our office in the last like week or so. We have the ways to get involved. So I think it could be a good opportunity for us to extend to other students if one of us is involved as well. So. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, Victor. Um, so I'm a physics major, and um, I see that in the general courses um, for physics, like general physics one and two, they buy the textbook that gives them the access to the online homework, but then they only use that one specific textbook for that one semester. And then now they have a $200 textbook that they're never going to use again. Yeah. Um, have you talked to the physics department about using open yeah. doors? And my other question is, because in the higher division uh, courses for physics, there's only like six, seven people that are in those classes. So how would you, how would that be more beneficial? Or can you find open education resources for those upper division kind of courses overall, like gen in chemistry or in biology? Yeah, and so it is going to vary. So I mentioned OpenStax, which is published by Rice University, and they've gotten external funding to develop textbooks that look just the same, really, as a commercial textbook would. Um, and you can even buy hardbound copies off of Amazon, but it's more like $60 instead of $200. But you don't even need to buy a hard copy because they have it for free online. So um, that's like kind of a gold standard of OER because they really make it the same way as a commercial publisher would. They have huge budgets. They have those for the first year physics courses, whether it's university physics or college physics. It's very confusing how they have the algebra based and the calc based. They have like, for example, OpenStax has those books. Mm -hmm. And so um, those are options. And I know there have been some faculty that have piloted or are planning to do an adoption OER adoption project kind of at those course levels. I know in chemistry, we do have resources for upper division courses. One thing that helped us in chemistry is there's another major place where you can look for OER that's called Libre Text. And it used to be ChemWiki back in the day. It was started by a chemistry faculty member at UC Davis, and then it's grown and there's resources for all sorts of disciplines now. So that's one place where I would look for other physics resources. There's also um, the Open Textbook Library, which has 1,500 books across all disciplines. 
Um, and then people are creating things in press books. There's a lot of different places for faculty to look. That's one thing that makes this a kind of a tricky space, right? Because there's a lot of possible places where good OER for your courses might be hanging out. So it would be cool for me to reach out more explicitly to the physics department, try to maybe go to one of their department meetings. There have been a couple people that have piloted some things, so there's a little bit of momentum that maybe we could try to build on. But yeah, physics would be a really good one to try to target. Um, we've had some success in some lower division mathematics classes, but expanding that to other, you know, high enrollment mathematics classes. And also, you know, maybe it's easier for a faculty member to say, well, I'm teaching this upper division course that only has six students and I found a decent resource. And that's actually easier for me to change over than changing over my, you know, higher enrollment intro class because I also have to figure out the online homework piece or whatever. But Related to those OpenStax textbooks, they do have online homework partners where you could just have students paying for an online homework and not that textbook too, that would bring the cost down to more like 40 or $50 rather than you know, 100 or $200. So that is a step in the right direction. And that might be a good conversation for me to have you know, with the physics department, maybe with the math department with respect to college algebra, you know, some courses like that. So yeah, those, Courses that also require online homework systems tend to be very pricey, and those are good ones for us to kind of more aggressively target. Any other questions, comments? Just a quick comment. Um, I think if we partner, of course, we can help produce some of that data that is missing, which would help influence the um, different colleges, I forget the official title position, the chairs, the, uh, yeah, the yeah, thank the teams, you, yeah. of potentially, you know, pushing that. Maybe we down. could partner on like a student survey. I, I have like something in Qualtrics that we've used in the past, but you know, if there were some people that were interested, we could kind of workshop that together and then think about how to get it well distributed. That would be another maybe project that we could potentially partner on that would be, you know, something that would just be a few hours of work, but might have a pretty big impact. Absolutely. Just kind of a direct comment on that, Victor, we might want to explore tying this in with the sustainability committee and maybe have them partner with doing some sort of survey on that, especially with how we are realigning the goals around sustainability and not just making it environmental, but student well-being. I'm thinking that this is something that perfectly falls within that new goal that we're developing with that. Um, I could definitely get in contact with you. We could have a meeting and talk about it. See, yeah. see how the sustainability can support. Oh yeah, I love it. Thank you. And then my last comment, or more more of a question. Um, have you had discussions with the president's cabinet about OERs? You know, the president has been very supportive. Um, something that worked really well is back in 2019, I gave a TED talk. We had the first ever TEDx event and the president gave a TEDx talk. And so I gave one that was on learning and I mentioned open educational resources in the context of that TED talk. And I think doing that helped put OER on the president's radar. So the president of the university herself has written letters of support of all of our OER grants to CDHE. Um, but, and I did present to the board of trustees last spring and that was very well received. So, you know, I am trying to keep, <laughs> oh, and then one other cool thing I wanna tell you all about is we have a team of five of us at MSU Denver that are participating in something called the Institute on OER that's run by the American Association of Colleges and Universities. And so we have a team of our um, interim deputy provost Jeff Newcomer, um, Dr. Meredith Jeffers, who's the director of strategy, Bridget Arendt, who's in the CTLD. She helps make sure people are teaching well. She's the associate director of, of teaching over at the CTLD. And then myself and John Dyer, who's a professor in biology and serves on the state OER council. The five of us are working together to try to you know, make our OER initiative even stronger this semester. And so we are trying to get it kind of better institutionalized and maybe on more people's radars. And, um, you know, we have this OER task force and it's kind of just this bubble that's not appropriately attached to the org chart just because we got started and there's been a lot of, you know, leadership transitions and things. So that is kind of a higher level effort that's happening this year, this academic year that I'm hoping will be fruitful and could, you know, maybe help us make sure 
we're getting the right attention in the right places. Thank you so much. Perfect. Any other questions or comments? Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking to us. Is there anything else that you had that you wanted to bring up with us? Or was that kind of the gist of it? That's the gist of it. And I'm glad we have these two follow ups. I'll get back to you with an OER task force job description. So either someone that's part of your um, group or another student that wants to be involved, you know, could potentially join our task force. Do you have one more question? Yeah. Um, is there a limit on how many students you're looking for? That's a great question. Well, that is a great question. I mean, you know, we don't want to have too many people just because that gets unwieldy, but it might actually be advantageous to have two students on the OER task force. So I think that could be really good because, of course, sometimes things come up and people can't make it. And so having and then, you know, we're going to be trying to work on that OER event in the spring, you know, so maybe one or both of those people would want to participate in that, you know, it, it gives more possibilities. So, yeah, I think. Would there also be a benefit? if possible, to try and find somebody who's in an undergraduate program and a master's program? You know, that's an interesting question. Social work has been a real leader. Um, and so, department. yeah, so like um, that, you know, that's a really interesting angle. Yeah. So potentially that, that would be a if way possible. to split it up. Absolutely. I know we have like 50 or 16,000 undergraduate students and more like you know, a little over a thousand graduate students. Yeah. So it might be harder to always be able to have a graduate student as well, but I think it's an excellent idea. Like, I'm definitely open to that. They can at least advocate for what they experienced in their yes. undergrad. Yes, it, right, it gives like uh, a whole other mm -hmm. perspective. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then also, um, we'll connect about partnering with a, a, an OER student survey and how this OER work might fit into the sustainability work that you're doing. Yeah. That would be amazing. Uh, Victor is the chair of our sustainability committee, okay. so okay. I will have him reach out to Perfect. you about maybe going to our meetings and talking about that. Further. I love it. Okay. And then I think we'll discuss this council and see if we have anybody with the capacity to be a representative for you guys as well. I think it can be beneficial to also maybe have one TSAC representative and then another one that's just a student representative yeah. outside of Actually, TSAC. I love that idea too. Um, so we'll kind of have to work with you and kind of figure out the best way to fit us into there. But I think this is something that really aligns with um, the goals that we've set for ourselves this year, especially with the sustainability committee. Okay. So looking forward to working with you. Yeah. Oh, I'm really excited. Thank you all for making the time. I really appreciate this opportunity to share as well. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Happy Friday. <laughs> All right, we only have like half an hour left, so I just want to jump straight into the Tivoli Reimagined. Was anybody interested in self-nominating or nominating somebody for that committee? Um, quick question. Hold on, Will had a question so, first. We, and I apologize, can we go over again, just a quick summary of what that is? Yes. I have the, I have the description here. So uh, the Raria campus has included the Tivoli Reimagined Project, our five-year plan submitted for capital construction for the to advance this effort. We would like to work with an architect to develop a program plan to submit the capital development committee or funding consideration in 26 and 27. To do so, we will need to collectively develop a program plan document based on the previous reimagining work done by Horde, the architect. This program will need to be finished and approved by our area board of directors in March of 26. The Tivoli Reimagine project will focus on critical infrastructure needs of Tivoli Student Union building and modernization of the building. As part of the steering committee, you will be asked to attend monthly meetings as a representative of each student body. So from your point of view, what in Tivoli Student Union needs to change, what needs to be modernized, something needs to get removed, and then we're gonna make like a plan to pitch it to get funding. <laughs> Just a question for Victor if he knows it. It's okay if he don't. Um, do you know if they obviously considered that it's a historic building and all of that and they have all the processes pointed out? That's usually the biggest, one of the biggest issues. Yeah. With. It, because it's an old building, they have to think about the infrastructure first before they think about anything because it is an old building. So they have to renovate it first. Right. So that would be. That would definitely be in the plan, but we're not going to do any renovations until 
five years. <laughs> five years? Yeah, it's a five-year plan. Mm. Okay. And we're going to submit submit it in 27. So. Years? No, in 2027. Oh. Three years. <laughs> so I remember, uh, jog memory, I was in SACAP. This is actually is important. Um, if you have any beef with AHEC on spacing, this is a great committee because what they're most likely going to do is reimagine the Tivoli. I've seen these plans. I do like them, actually. But what they're going to do is look at office space, how it's been currently allocated, and they're say like the office not being utilized. They're going to reallocate something that's going to be there, like that's going to be like more well used there too. Also, like uh, in terms of like what's up, uh, traffic, foot traffic. Like some of our offices in the second, third floor don't really get visited as much. So if you sat on that committee, you could say, oh, like we would like the TSAC uh, office to be on the second floor so we can get more foot traffic, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't like that yet, but I don't think that's a Starbucks. Yeah. Or <laughs> the Starbucks, maybe think about a different vendor. All the yeah, vendors new vendors as well. We're going to have it put on the vendors as well downstairs because obviously there's only one vendor for three spots. So. They do have space for events. You could you could put your input in that. You're going to be working with architects. You're going to see budgets, all that good stuff. What is the capacity for this too? Uh, once a month. Yes. And the first meeting is going to be the end of October. Will. Um, this is a question more for either Mike or Victor, whoever can answer. Um, what is the plans that you have seen so far? Just out of context, just some more information on that. Sure. And what you've seen that makes you I can like it. First. So a lot of so a lot, they're they're okay. The way they want to do this is expand the front entrance. So the front entrance of the building is the steps that is it's very discreet. You can't you don't really think it's the front entrance. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what they're gonna do is kind of level that front entrance, make it more welcoming. What they want to do is expand it put the vendors there, kind of like kind of like stalls-ish in a way. You kind of make them like a stalls as you walk in. Um, it's, it's more of an outside type feel, a little bit more food court type feel, but they're going to make it. You can't look at it. I wish we can go like take a quick field trip over the look at it. But they're going to make that space bigger. So you know the driveway right in front of the, front of the right there? Mm -hmm. Most likely that's going to go away. And it's going to be like a like an outdoor space vendors are there and it would be a better entrance into the typically with that saying they're going to completely reimagine the downstairs as well um they're going to make it more office space give it kind of more spacey feel um utilize that space a little better in a sense so it's a, it's a huge plan it's, it's a plan i think it looks beautiful on paper and i think what they need to do it's kind of expanding the old infrastructure too it's going to look like over the outside because of the historic building, the mm -hmm. inside is going to be completely modern. So they're going to they're going to redo every like the lights. They're going to make all the windows double plane so it can save energy. All that kind of stuff. Is Carl in this committee? Uh, Carl, not for this specific committee, but Carl was uh, for public safety building that they're building. So who is the? This the is Sophie. Uh, yes, yeah, so Sophia Tran, and she works for AHEC. Looks like she works under Carl. Um, I would, yes, I would assume she works. Okay, for sure. For food vendors specifically, I don't know if um, Levi had the chance to bring this up at the last meeting, but Dr. Simpkins did offer to come and talk to us about that specifically and get our opinions on that. So I know that kind of relates into the typically reimagined, but that is also a little bit separate. So I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, direct question for you. Did he offer or is he putting himself on the agenda? He, offered because he offered when I went to the housing meeting um, to all of the different people that he was willing to come in and okay. meet with us on that if we were interested. So we can definitely get him on the agenda if that is something you're interested in. We can discuss that further later. I just wanted to clarify that for voting up this committee specifically. So I'm the representative for CICAP on that committee. So I Okay, perfect. Uh, or if you guys want, I could be both the representative for DSEC mm -hmm. and so you're on the committee already? I'm already on the committee. Okay. He's the SAB rep. Or the SACAP rep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's also two SABs. So I, I don't know if you noticed. I have some strong opinions, but I, I don't know if it's yeah. made aware. But if this is it's once a month. Um, I don't mind staying on this committee. Okay. So I don't have a lot of capacity, but like I don't mind. This is something that I 
I've been fighting this fight for years. So I'm ready. I'll self-nominate myself to go on there. Um, so, I don't know. Um, never mind, I'll save that question for you. Um, any other questions, concerns about the committee itself before we continue with self-nominations and nominations for the committee? Concerns? Does anyone else want to nominate themselves so I can give a speech? That's right. So for uh, this is just a question for the development of this, um, like what's like the certain like descriptions that like we would be doing? Is it just our input or our? I just resigned. Uh, the specific role of the TSAC member in this oh, committee. Like it would it would be like you're expl you're putting your input. Um, I wouldn't. That's actually a good question. I might have to follow up with Sophia on that. See if we have like a vote or not. Or anything. Mm -hmm. As for now, it's specifically opinion and input. Advisory. Advisory. Um, any other, definitely follow up though. Yeah. Any other self nominations, or would anybody like to nominate somebody on the council for this committee? Or are we just going to roll with Mike? Roll once. Old head on this. Yeah. Roll twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, since Mike is the only one that has expressed any interest, I'm going to go ahead and mo motion that we. Bypass voting and speeches and questions, and we go ahead and nominate Mike as our representative for the Tivoli Reimagined. Second. Second. Um, any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. Sweet. Aye. All right. Um, I have on here. Send me a calendar invite. I have on here to do a quick debrief about the meeting, how it went, pros and cons, what to do next time. Um, I'd like to keep this short and sweet, and we can do a more in-depth one with just the PR committee specifically if we'd like, uh, but just since everybody was supposed to be involved in this event, I thought it would be good for us to all just kind of like real quick, maybe five minutes, pros, cons, what we can do better next time. Um, I don't know which one of you guys was first. So it was Mike. The scissors. It was Mike, then Pat. And then Patrick. So as someone who's an old head, um, I've been here, the, the next part that was successful open has we've had yet. Um, just in terms of enthusiasm, people coming. I mean, I think we all have a joint commitment. I think the old heads, other old heads in the council, kind of kind of agree. The joint commitment was there. I love it. One thing I want to, I think we should work on is definitely making the office more open, like more appealing. And I think with the new furniture, with the new upgrades we'll be getting, it will be like that. I think one thing considering is we should probably do this again in the spring, maybe in the, the end of winter. Um, work on like let's definitely ramp up those decorations, make that place look fun and inviting. I think it's a good job. Good job. Well, well, um, I I like the effort put, but I think some some of us weren't there for many reasons, and uh, I just heard a few issues from different people about communication. I would say that was something that could be worked on from the PR committee. Um, and those are the main issues I heard about the meet and greet, just communication. Um, some counselors were sort of more of a, uh, transparent talk about it. Um, I did hear, I think, I don't know if Stephen, I'm throwing Stephen under the bus here, but he told me that for setting up, he wishes that there were better communication from the PR committee. Um, and that would be the main thing I heard, but other than, well, other than that, um, pretty good job, at least in putting that our best face that day. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Sorry. Direct comment? Yeah. Sorry. Um, no, I just wanted to ask, like, what type of like, communication was Patrick seeking for setting up? I said Patrick, I'm sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, I also talked to Stephen directly about this, so I can take on that question. Um, I think it was, so for the decorations, he had wanted it just to be more explicit, like send a message in the chat. Hey, everybody, we are meeting at this time to set up the decorations. Um, I know there was some informal communication, but I think he just said that, it would have been better if we could have just been a little bit more direct because he was disappointed that not everybody was there to help decorate. And I was like, well, like Susanna and I had talked about doing the decorations the day before and I had told her I had class. But I think he just wanted more of a direct communication, like maybe something in writing in the team's message, I think would have been beneficial. Um, 
I'm for the decorating sure. specifically. No, you're totally fine. Um, I, mm. I think that was helpful. Sorry, to comment. Yes, I've also heard, and this is more of a question I want to pose to the council is when we're setting up these events, um, is it best? Because I, my opinion is the PR committee should have autonomy, but I've also heard that from counselors that they would want to input as to when these events go or happen on what day and what time. Um, but I let this one counselor know that the committee has or should have that autonomy, but it's just a discussion I wanted to bring to the council. Yeah, I kind of put that out. Direct comment on that is that we don't really have an established PR committee right now. We have PR committee chairs Correct. and then every single counselor in the room is in a PR committee group chat. So if we're going to leave the discretion for these kinds of events and choices and decisions to be up to the PR committee right now, everybody is on the PR committee. So if we want to make it a little bit more explicit, have Susanna and Siobhan take the lead as chairs. And I know Patrick express, expressed interest in participating and a couple other people. We can make a more set defined PR committee so that those people can make sure that their viewpoints are heard when we're planning and doing these events. We can have more formal PR committee meetings in the same way that we've done the more formal sustainability committee meetings. Direct comment. Yes. Um, there is one other thing regarding with Patrick. Um, yeah, I talked about. You mentioned that too. Do you want? I mean, we um, talked, so. Yeah, so from last meeting, I, t I misunderstood it. So that's my bad. And also, I should have checked the constitution. My bad, too. Um, so I just know I, what I remember that like Patrick was expressing it, and I thought we were OK of him being in the PR committee. So I just like, and I was also like very rushed with the counselor post on Instagram. So I like, I talked to Patrick and Michael. I'm like, oh, does this look good? I'm like, because I can't remember of like, of him being in the committee. So I'm just, I just took the assumption that he was in the committee already. So I put him on there on the committee. So we need to make a vote if Patrick can be in the PR committee. Do we need to do? Yeah, it's specifics. So if he's a co-chair, there does, there they need to be Correct. voted in. But if they're if just a member, if, ju if they're just a member, no, but if he is going to be a co-chair, there does need to be a vote on that. We committees, committee chairs do not have the power to elect fellow co-chairs, if that makes sense. Yes. So that is unconstitutional. Yeah, something that me and Siobhan talked about it, that we were okay with this. So I just I just took the lead and I just yeah. took the jump with that one. Um, and that can be fixed quickly with just a simple vote of just putting him as a co-chair. That can, that's that's easily fixed. That's not it's not a big issue. Just it has to be voted on if he's gonna be a chair, not just okay. a member. Direct comment or no? Yeah, sort of. Um I think the solution I think the solution is we do you can if you that's what you all wish, add another co chair and then just set up a reoccurring meeting, use brand you know, we all set up a reoccurring meeting and whoever can make it to the PR committee or wants a big part of it can make time to be there. Because I do think like a weekly meeting going over kind of things like that would be good. Yeah. Just for continuity purposes, you know. Especially because we've got some ideas for y'all. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, for ideas. No direct comments. I would like to get to Patrick and oh, his yes. comments because they've been patiently waiting for so long. <laughs> well, so for mine is kind of going back to what you guys are saying because I've been having the idea as well. Because I feel um, with the PR committee, what this drives is when we have like a lot of input and ideas to put into like what we're gonna do. Um, you know, I feel like going into this, you know, I wasn't really informed of everything, you know, kind of rushed, but I didn't know the understanding of the importance of everyone coming to meet us and do the guidance. Um, I definitely have a lot of ideas for how can we reach out to people more because I feel that's what we're struggling with right now is getting the attention of not just the students that are already involved on campus, but those that aren't involved into their campus directly. And um, I think with more ideas, not just from us three, but definitely from the rest of the council, will definitely help us reach like the different areas that we're all in because everyone here is diverse, everyone has their own community, but we're also here joined together. 
to find what is suitable for MSU. Um, so I think definitely the idea of having essentially everyone here having ideas, definitely having a structure to like what we're going to decide on going forth for those events will definitely help us like get more attention because you know going into there when I first got it, there was a lot of people that weren't really interested to talking to us. Most of them were just going for food. And even that's good that we have at least get your attention. Um, there was definitely like help there that we needed. At least coming out, not just letting them come to us, but for us to, for, to come to them. Because that's, I think that's the biggest thing. A lot of us were just in the office and not many were just like reaching out to get everybody their attention. Because that's going to be our biggest struggle here is that everyone's really just trying to get to their classes or just trying to go home. And that's what we got to get the attention from them to come to us and us to them. That was going to be my same comment it was that um being there i felt like towards the beginning of the event we were a lot more engaged and we were out there we were bringing people in mm -hmm. talking to them directly they weren't just getting food but we were like hey like do you have any questions for us while you're in there mm -hmm. hey just so you know like this is a place you can come to hey grab the free school supplies um and then like as the event started to die down it was like everybody was just kind of in the bag sitting on the computers working on homework or doing other things and not really engaging but there also wasn't as many people coming in mm -hmm. um, but it's just like making sure we're going out to them just emphasizing okay Matt sorry I agree with most of what was said I just want to throw the caveat the um like we just passed the budget last week um and I want to recognize that the PR team wanted to make sure that we were out there and getting people to come in to some capacity in a kind of rocky time frame. Yeah. So all these critiques we're giving are for growth, not, I wouldn't say directly saying that anything directly went wrong. Yeah, I agree. I would really emphasize that too. You guys did a really, really, really good job with this event, especially oh, taking the last minute. Yeah, yeah. So it's- I just want to make it set. No, no, tea, no shade, I'm glad. I feel like and once we do vote in Patrick, I we accept any mm -hmm. I take criticism as a good thing, wasn't yeah. Because yeah. like how how are we can improve it. So yeah. I just want to say the quiet part out loud. Yeah. Perfect. Uh Patrick and then come just like that, because you know, just as the small things I noticed in that, but then that when we got on there and we decided what we're gonna do together. We got onto that and Matt was quickly to help us out too to get everyone's attention. So I think the teamwork was there when we were all there together. So, you know, that's also a great hats off to us because I think that's what started bringing a lot more people in was our teamwork. Yeah, and the timeline you guys did it in, the flyer, putting up the post on Instagram. Yeah, the best. Cool. All right. Um, I wanted to keep this brief, so I'm going to move on. That's okay with everybody else to the next item. Uh, sorry. No, you're for fine. clarification for myself and accountability, what is the stance we're doing so far with Patrick and his official uh, connection, I guess, with the PR committee? His title. I want. His... Yep. Um. As of right now, he's a member. Would somebody want to make a motion to have him added in as a co-chair? or to at least have him have the opportunity to do a quick speech maybe and we do voting on it. Matt, direct comment. Well, I have a question kind of towards Patrick. Do you want to be a co-chair or just part of the committee? Well, I feel like I want to be a co-chair. Right. That, I mean, I'm not sure if any of you guys pay attention to my speech, but well, mine was mainly just, I want to get to the people that are right. here. That's my goal. I just want to make sure you were on the same page that we were talking about pushing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> is, it, is it okay with the standing PR committee that we motion to? Yeah, I was gonna make a motion. Yeah. Okay. It's cause like we are talking to the Do you wanna make a motion for a vote or do you wanna make a motion for him to do a speech or a motion for us to bring it to the table as a discussion and then do a vote? I think a discussion could be good, Levi. I just had a quick question. Um, is it possible to have more than two co-chairs for a committee? That was my concern. That's whatever we want to be. There's nothing in our bylaws, constitution, right? Accountability. Okay, so as Matt was saying, because there is <laughs> nothing prohibiting it in our constitution by, by word, we can officially do it, but it does state that a chair has to be voted. 
yeah. by the TSEC or by the council. So yeah. we have to abide by that at the minimum. That was my only. Do you guys feel that you can work together with the three of you in shared levels of commitment? I believe we already talked about it, and like having like more than two will help us like improve and help have another perspective on the shares. Do you want to? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you're in speech one today, so I don't think so. And for the sake of time. No, I don't think also because of time. So I want to make a motion to keep the speech and like vote for Patrick to be part of co chair PL committee. I second that. Any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Aye. Congratulations, Patrick. Thanks for on all the committees today. All right. Um, this next one is less of a like, agenda item for us to work on at this meeting, but more of an ask from Levi and I and the advisors. Um, we're in October and we've done essentially two things, the meet and greet and the school supplies. And I know that there was a lot of stepping stones to get us to the point where we are. We just passed the budget last week. We had some drama with the co-chair resigning and all of that. So it's nothing to say that you guys haven't been doing hard work. But I do feel like a lot of the work that has been being done is on an individual basis and we're not working together as a council to get things passed and getting things communicated. Um, so just kind of a goal that I have for all the committees moving forward is I think by the next meeting, I would like each of the committees to have one specific event action item, something along those lines with a set out timeline and actual steps for how you're going to reach it. Um, and I would like you to include that in your update for next week. That way we can just make sure we're actually getting some stuff done um, and we're holding y'all accountable to it. Um, does that sound like a fair ask to everybody? It's kind of like more like a practical and like, because um, we still have this semester, we only have like two, three, two months and like a couple weeks and then we have a spring semester. And already we have some plans for the next semester. So we're just asking like, say if you have an event, um, like next meeting you like, you pass a resolution or something for a small event or whatever, and you say when you want it, what's the time for it, and when is the end, or something like that. Yeah, and even if you're not quite ready to like bring up a resolution, at least have in your update, hey, we want to work on a, I'm going to use Victor's example, blanket and coat drive through the sustainability committee. We are planning to host this coat drive in conjunction with another person. And like, here are the specific action steps we're taking. This is the date we want to do it. This is when we ha we'll have the resolution passed by. <coughs> this is when we will have the flyers out by or connect with the PR committee for flyers by. Things like that, just so that it's more like specific. And we've got dates on things so that way we can hold y'all accountable to it. Perfect. Does that sound like a fair ask? Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, then if nothing else, we will move over to board and committee updates. Um, we may need to extend the time of the meeting. Can I go ahead and just do that now? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to make a motion first to extend the time of the meeting. Let's go ahead and go with 1.15 for now. If we need to extend it further, we can. Seconded. Um, any objections? Any abstentions? All right, we will go ahead and we will end the meeting at 1.15. If we need to extend it further, I will make another motion at that time. We'll start with Board of Trustees. Mike, any updates? Um, no, the meeting was last week. Um, only updates so far is um, I will be out the, what is it? The 10th and the 11th, so I'll be missing our Friday meeting because I have a full two-day retreat um, with senior leadership and staff. Um, to kind of, we, we they do a yearly retreat, and this I will be at it for it. So um, I will be, I will, yeah, that day. That's all. The eleventh. The eleventh of the time. The eleventh. Um, right. really. Well, I didn't know this. Was, this was, this was a, um, uh, no, that, that, nothing. Then I had didn't mention last week. Nothing. <laughs> nothing on the horizon currently. So. Okay. All right, then with that, I'll move on to Matt and Victor from SACAP updates. Hi, um, not a lot of big stuff. We're still 
kind of getting our ground rules. We were talking about team building and stuff and what was talked about earlier in the meeting. Um, but one thing, I'm the sustainability committee chair for SACAP. Um, so one idea I was saying up today that I want to work towards the goals that you set here to make it more solid. But I want to try and see if we can do a like a day of service with all three student governments. Oh, in the campus? Mm -hmm. So there it's like a river, like a river cleanup. cleanup or campus sustainability. I know UCD did it last year. They helped change out a bunch of like the light bulbs mm -hmm. to the energy efficient ones kind of things. Or we can help with the composting, stuff like that. Yeah. But just all three student governments together. Yeah. 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 Like all three student governments and say cap kind of join in together to show camaraderie and support for campus. Okay. okay. Anything else? Um, no, just uh, Michael. Okay. Uh, Will, do you have anything for our accountability committee? Uh, thankfully, not. Something that is coming down the pipeline, though, to your point of every committee doing something is I've thought of doing a CPR training for free for students, MSC Denver students. Um, I am in the work with uh, the director of Campus Rec because they have someone who trains people there. And I have roped in Stephen into that conversation to facilitate. Perfect. I do have two things for you. Um, one, have you been able to nominate your other two members for the accountability committee? That's a great question. I have nominated one. I'm still deciding on that second this, person. Uh, first one. Matthew. Okay, perfect. Um, and, sorry. No, you're fine. And to give you a timeline on that second person, I will have that second person by the next meeting. Perfect. So. Um, second, and this is just kind of food for thought. You don't have to give me an answer at this meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been talking with Stephen about possibly doing some sort of like constitutional review committee, and we thought that it would align with kind of like. The goals and the responsibilities of the accountability committee do you think this is something you would possibly want to take on and again you don't have to give me an answer now you can kind of think on it talk with matt and whoever you nominate else also into that committee and see if that's something y'all would be interested in doing i i would love to do that okay so that is definitely within my purview and responsibilities i believe and yeah I I find, to check, but... yeah once i find that second person we can all discuss that and come back to the council with a certain report. As for that report, the timeline, we'll see. You don't have to get this yeah. one yet. Yeah, yeah, no, because I just threw that out of you. Um, cool, so no other updates then. Uh, no. Uh, Mike slash Patrick, do you guys have anything for budget? I do, yes. Um, can you bring up the budget real quick, Brandon? We do some, some <laughs> so I finally got around to doing all the receipts from this year. And uh, just to make y'all aware, um, there were some purchases I wasn't aware of. Well, I was aware of. I didn't realize the extent of which. But so, like, our J July retreat, um, I got on those receipts. I'm going to show y'all what we did here. <coughs> the July retreat? Retreat. Yeah, we did the Colby assessments, all that stuff. Oh, our trainings, not the leadership retreat. Oh, yes, that I one. Kept yes. confusing me with I this. kept confusing her, yeah. Oh, okay. Cause I, I try I sometimes. Um, if we're able to share that real quick, just to give y'all an update on what just we did. For us specifically, yeah. not the one that was with all the people from like and others. Correct. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it was, it was our training. Uh, you can go to the shared file and you can probably find it. Or is it there? Okay. So. Hold up on your computer, but not on. Yeah. I just put it on here. Want me in the mouse real quick, too? All right, lovely. So here's where our budget stands at. Is it shared from the screen? Um, here we go. Do you mind sharing the screen? Do you mind sharing the screen? You probably have to do it on this one. Yeah. Hold up. Why is that? Yeah, I was right. like, I did not use. Whoopsie daisy. That's just a little. Whoopsie daisy. That's not true. Um, don't look at that. Victor, you still have $8,000. I was going to say, I better have $8,000. <laughs> Okay. Back. Yeah. Look this gives me time to fix whatever went wrong here. Um, so, there we go. 
Oh, that's the rainy day. Oh, I switched them. That's why. Oh, okay. Don't worry. All right. Is it showing the screen now? Yep. Okay, cool. So we'll go over this. Victor, I remember I fixed that. You do have $8,000. That's the rainy day fund. Um, <laughs> bring y'all aware. So we're going to rainy day fund here. Um, we, before we even went through, we should probably gone through all the receipts prior to the budget being passed. Um, but so like, for instance, our July training retreat that we did cost us 3,200 and something dollars. That's for the food, the booking and the co base assessment, a lot of money, but I didn't, as the budget chair. Was that when we went to downtown? Well, yes, that was when we went to downtown. Um, and the Colby assessment was pretty expensive itself. Okay. Correct. Yeah. I can't do it. But um, sorry, that's bugging me. I'll fix it later. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, you still have eight thousand dollars. Don't worry. But so I took that out of the rainy day funds. I did not want to decrease any of these funds anymore in the sense. So um, that's why we have we spent this much of the rainy day fund. That's why. So this is the true fund for there. So unless anyone has any big like, oh, why did you not consult us with it? I felt like that was a better option than just taking it straight out of anyone's budget, for instance, or decreasing anyone's budgets. So that's the big update there. Um, what's up, Will? How can I help you? What? Do you have something? I don't see. What? Our billing committee is in there. $1,000. Correct. Now, everyone's, I will fix Victor's budget. I know exactly what went wrong. I had to switch them. But so that's where you can see that's where our training is. I just kind of lumped it all in. You guys have questions on the receipts. They're up to date as well. Um, they usually have a description here, which I forgot. Oh, okay. This is for the retreat. So this we'll say that's the description. But this is for the retreat. Um, this is for the decorations office. This is for the school supplies. This is for decorations of the office. And what is this again? Oh, this is the, the raffle. And then this is the sandwiches we got for that day as well. So I feel like I'm up to date. Am I missing anyone's receipts? Um, just under 100, right? You yeah. still ordered more than the 17. For what? Oh, yeah, we school supplies. More than 17, what do you mean? You have it as 1,740. Okay. Okay. Send me all the receipts. Um, this is all that I was given by Armando. That's all that was paid for currently. Now, I don't think, I don't know if there's any other packages going in there. I know the notebooks did come in that they're in the office currently. I'll add that to this total. But this is the pens were supposed to come in, I think, yesterday. Okay. Interesting. So you're just adding them as you receive them. As I receive them, yes. So that would explain the difference. Okay. Correct. So, but that's where we're currently at with all that. Any questions? Did you? I'm going to fix it. Say, did you get the stuff for the happy hour too? The happy hour? Yeah. Uh, Were we paying for that out of our budget? I don't think. I thought the, the, the okay. I thought the president was paying for it. Yeah, I thought the president. Thought the president that's what they said. For it. But, I mean, Can you confirm uh, that? No, I think the president's paying for it. We'll confirm. Uh, we'll okay, confirm yeah. later. And that's at two, right? At degree? Yeah, it's at degree. It's yes. at two o'clock at degree. Be at the happy hour. I'm not going to agree. Can we talk about that later? Can we finish the update so we can talk about that? Yeah. After the so there we go. That's better. Okay. Direct comment on this or about that? Question, actually. Like, if this change from the budget we approved a few weeks ago, like to the extent where we would need to vote on it again? No. I mean, if the budget committee, if, if there's like an issue that you'd like to convene the budget committee, then no. I just took it. Just use the money from the rainy day fund. Correct. To pay for I manage that. majority of these, well, Victor will, or Patrick will manage the majority of these funds after this meeting, but I just took discretion as I manage the rainy day fund. I just took discretion and took care of that. So, Which is within. That's in, within my powers. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So, Any I, other questions, comments, concerns, budget? I, uh, moving on.
like right next to it. You know, they have like the MSU Denver and the CCD and like the CU Denver where they just have like these little like bulletin boards that are behind glass. So we have one of those right next to the student government office. Oh, you found the key? We found the key for it. And I think it would be the perfect place for us to put our little introductions and maybe yeah. like a little cute thing of our goals. I can touch base with you guys about that later. Can you hear us, uh, yes. Armando, or? Muted. Not yet. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> Um, but we can touch base on that sometime outside of the meeting just for the sake of time. Uh, I'll definitely like talk, we'll talk as a team about the time because I agree with that. So that's going to help us to be more structural. Yeah. Future events. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Moving on to Mr. Victor for the Sustainability Committee. Mr. Victor. Mr. Oh, I like to actually, Professor. So, not, nothing too big. We had the Sustainability Day on Wednesday where we went and saw the closed loop for, for campus, which is really cool. So like we compost everything that we take in the composting bins and put it back into the thing. So it was really cool. This governor was there. We went to we take a picture because he was only there for like five minutes. Yeah, he just did a speech and then he left. Um, Sorry. No, but in regards to who hosted that ECP, um, I was able to sit down with a couple of people from ECP and they really do want to partner with uh, TSEC and see what TSEC and ECP are able to do. And like how she said, we were, I pitched the idea of um, the blanket and the, the jacket drive. Um, and they were saying that we should do it during the uh, Homelessness Awareness Week. Mm -hmm. But the, this is also uh, the homelessness awareness week is in November, so we could do something in between in, between in October, um, and then once October is over, from the first week for the first November to the nineteenth, that's the week that we do the collections. So that the week that homelessness awareness is, we're able to get out. Mm -hmm. So that one. Is one they also said they were really interested in partnering to have like a, a student led not, not a student led but a project where the students are able to design something and um, have it benefit the entirety of campus and we were, we're not didn't necessarily talk about the specific program or the specific project on that but they said they uh, are willing to partner and willing to give us a little bit of bread, basically, to be able to make this a bigger project. Uh, it's really exciting. Yeah. Um, one thing to add on to that that they brought up in the SACAD meeting, too, um, that I found interesting was the building the like mini structures for the bicycles mm -hmm. were actually proposed, developed, and constructed by students. And all ACP did so that was an project. example of the project he's referencing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was thinking having something regarding engineering or biochemistry and see how that affects us. But that's a little bit down the line. We can we can think about. We can talk about yeah. And then sustainability. Just in terms of the constitution, I wrote an amendment. I'm finalizing it. I should have it done this week, and then I'll present it on Friday to vote on it the following week. Perfect. Spectacular. Um, and if you guys have any other input, please let me know. Mm -hmm. well, well, um, do you mind sending me that before once you finalized it before the meeting? Yes. Yeah, you'll put it in the chat anyways yeah. too. But yeah, um, we've also been working on it in the sustainability committee meetings. So. Mm -hmm. And you guys have the input for those. Yeah. Just so everybody knows with amendments, uh, we will read it next week, but we would wait a week to vote on it. Yeah. All right, um, that's all we have from sustainability. I'm gonna move to open for announcements and updates. Does anybody have anything for that? Uh, if not, I think Levi and I do. Uh, two quick things. So I'll go first real quick. Uh, for the CDHE uh, or the Colorado Department of Higher Education, we had a meeting today, I discussed with them. Uh, they mostly want to know what's up with students, you know, if we have any issues on the state level that we want to talk about, such as bills being proposed or uh, stuff we want having on campus. Uh, they want us to let them know, uh, so we talked to them about that. They also want us to possibly invite them to events like the Ribbon Coven, 
or any other events we have on campus, like for example, the tri institutional <coughs> event, maybe, maybe invite people. And then uh, also, if you guys uh, do want to come to the meeting and talk to them, uh, you can also present to them, like uh, for, uh, Victor, uh, for example, could have presented at the room cutting to the uh, uh, Colorado Higher Education Department quite a bit. And they can give information to them about attending, about what they want for students and sustainability and stuff like that. And then, um, are you saying that? Oh, you can continue. I just uh, comment after you're done. Um, other than that, that's all I have. Is there any questions about that? Well, I'm just going to throw out the the CDHE person was actually at the ribbon cutting. Just FYI. Yeah, that, that's I brought it up because they mentioned it in the meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Victor and then Mike. Oh, so you invited them? Um, no. When do you when do you meet again with them? I meet again with them next month. Next month, because for SACAB, they wanted to get a vote for the SACAB representative on the area board of directors, um, but they have to go through legislation to be able to change that to, so students can get a vote. So you should see see me in that one, so I could present the idea that Louise the SACAB had. Because that project has to go up to the legislation to be able to. Yeah, and that's for any other initiatives that you guys have as well. Uh, right. Hold, please. I just want to point out Armando in the chat just through the uh, advisor update on there. He has to head out. Um, thank you, Armando. Sure. Yeah. Should we do the meeting? Um, yeah. No, because my update will take two seconds. Okay. So, I'm out of time. I'm not sure. I was going to say one more thing, too. Um, they usually hold a conference. So every year that person holds like a conference with all student government leaders. It's called the Student Government Coalition, CGSE, mm -hmm. Colorado Student Government Coalition. I don't know if you want to add that back in or like mention that to them. I'm not sure if they're doing that. It would be a good opportunity for y'all to go down to the Capitol and meet people in the higher education mm -hmm. department. Mm -hmm. Governors showed up twice when I was there, so I don't know if with them. But I was under the impression they were allowed like co-chairs of the student government. Yeah, we, we, power we, can, structure though, so we, we can go and anyone can go. If it's yeah, you yeah. two, if it's people, I think I've gone away with sending five people there before. So I went last year. There you go, exactly. So. If that's the case, I'll send you to the date because they told me about that. But they made it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need to go. But if y'all want to. Okay, Levi had one more thing and then I have something. And then. Okay, so. Like I was mentioning to, to Susanna, we want to do more events and everything. But because October is right now upon us, I was proposing that if you guys want to uh, put more events, put your face more out there, we can uh, do quick, small events for the month of October, like set up a stand, give out coffee and like a cider to students for um, it's getting cold, you know, for October and everything. And then in November, we're planning, we're trying to plan and do a big event for November. So we want more of your guys' ideas and input participation on uh, collaborating on that. Should we like, any comments on that? Comments. Well, I, you just want, yeah. Oh. yeah, so do you just like, I don't even want to get in touch that. Do you want to like go over like possible events outside? I had a, one proposition for event. Um, I wanted to do more propositions for small events like that and even have like student leaders participate in it. But um, we can discuss more of that after the meeting. Yeah. Um, Susanna has a lot of information. She can send to you and then we can bring some more. Yeah. Maybe we should get together. Okay. Are you saying that? Um, for the PR committee meetings, I know you guys have your own chat and like your base team. Um, I just based it off from the group chat because from the feedback, okay. yeah. it's just everybody's in there right now. Okay. So like I, I oh sorry for cutting out. Because that just that actually feeds into what I was going to go with anyways. Because when you're at PR meetings, if you can make sure it goes to everybody, so everybody has the option of if they have the capacity and want and everything else to go. I agree. To share those ideas. Hi, anything else or can I go? Okay. Well, I have an announcement, but I'll go after you. Okay. I will make mine super quick. Uh, the Ask Your Professor events, I highly encourage you guys to attend those. They should be on the Instagram if you guys want to find the dates where I can send out the flyer for those. Um, that is something that I worked with Stephen and Dr. Poise a little bit on. They were kind of already doing it before I helped join that committee. Um, there's the twice as tough panel, uh, women of color candidates, race and campaigns, and misogynoir in the U.S. elections. That is October 1st. I highly recommend you guys attend if you can. Amelia is actually moderating that event. Um, and then last but not least, I attended President's Cabinet. Not too much coming out of it. Um, a lot of their focus was on homecoming and then the 2030 strategy update. They do have a new website and a new SharePoint for that. 
Um, so it's easier to find all the information and make sure that our goals are aligning with that. Um, they did pass um, something that kind of aligned with us about student survey policy, which was really just streamlining it and making it a little bit more bureaucratic. So they have to go through the system to make sure that we're not sending out the same surveys from a bunch of different people, essentially, and that we're not sending out like eight surveys at the same time. Um, that's going to the president for final approval. Um, but that's really the only applicable stuff for us from President's cabinet. Just comments, concerns. All right, we have one that go, Will. <laughs> uh, I motion we extend five minutes. I'll second. Okay. Any objections? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Okay. We're going to go ahead and go for it. If you need to leave, that is totally fine. Um, so, real quick, uh, Margarita Ratliff, I believe, came into our office looking for potentially a representative, and she's part of the Aurora Health Center. Uh, me and Patrick actually met her, and she was looking for someone who would give their input on menstrual products. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And um, she was asking potentially for one person from uh, TSAC. Um, we discussed that. She, we discussed previous uh, things, and ideally, we want someone from TSAC who, how should I put this? Okay. With uh, uses these products. Okay. Yes. Okay. And that that might actually fall under Victor. So that's a sustainability thing. And do you know that Matt is also working on this project with SACAB? So I'm going to let him make his and comment. I want to also get in contact with her as well. So if you can help with an introduction. Yeah, of course. That, that's about it. Um, just it's important to have someone who uses these products. We had someone last year, and I don't want to get into specifics, but yes, I think it's very important that we have someone who represents the group. Uh, yeah. About the fenomen products, that? Yes, yeah. the menstrual products. I do also, yes, having that voice, and I also want to be on this project because I think there is some also benefit for having others also advocate for it. Because I'm full on board for it. I've already done, actually, I've centered uh, classroom projects around it for research because um, it's something I am passionate about, um, even though I don't identify or use the products. Their comment on that is this something that we could possibly have multiple representatives on? So, like, I mean, Matt has worked so hard, so I would feel bad, like, entirely cutting him out. But if we want to have Matt and then right. maybe another TSAC member. So Yes, to answer your question, I talked to her and she was definitely on board with like having more than one person. Okay. There was an emphasis again on having someone who does represent that group though. Okay. So come on that when she also said I was just gonna like one a meeting once a month. So, you know, it gets to separate time, but yeah, it's well it was good, you know, just reiterate that's you know, she was looking for someone that can tell like get the student voice out there, surveys and um, being able to see like locations and where everything would be and you know just definitely having two people like that i think it's a great opportunity okay. just to put a deadline on this when does she need to hear back from us by uh, she did not give me a deadline but i believe the sooner we tackle this the better is so. it okay if we do it at the well, next meeting yeah, that's fine okay. i would push for that too um and i guess where i want to stay in it is make sure we have somebody to voice those like where when and whatnot but i want to be the advocating voice within SACAP to also get some extra money hopefully yeah i think definitely since you're working on it through SACAP, yeah. that's it Excellent. and it would be good to have SACAP then someone from tsec i'm not opposed i'm actually interested in that okay. so perfect we can vote on it yeah we can week. vote on it next week um i'll go ahead and add it into the agenda and we'll throw both of your names on there and then if anybody else is possibly interested in doing that um we can kind of what is like the official name for this just like um is give you is there I didn't, is it like the Antflow project or is it, it just like Antflow was so. under that but i didn't get like an official name for the whole thing okay. it's just like that's mm -hmm. for yeah, so unless someone else knows okay. more it's, it's it's a separate question. Okay. Maybe representative. Uh, I just I would be more than happy to work with you on the project, obviously, but I would love to get yeah input yeah. of the people who actually use. Correct. And that would be the yes. most important. Like, yeah. Factors. Not advocating so, while taking them out. 
So uh, I would love to be a part of the conversation, but again, there's a lot on my plate right now, so I'd like to be a supporter. Um, Stephen, I don't know if you have anything real quick, but we're ending the meeting at 1.20. Armando just threw his little update in the chat, so if you don't have anything, that's all right. I'll be there. I'll be there. Both of us, so. I think everybody except for Susana. And Amelia. And Amelia, obviously. Okay. All right. And with that, I motion to end this meeting. Second. Any objections? Any abstentions? All in favor? Stephen, probably. We'll be at the student government office. I need a charge button. Brandon, what's the best way to reach?